You guys ever have someone else driving your car? It's especially awkward when their legs are incredibly small. Sorry. I'm trying to get rid of this. Here's us. <laughs> I love watching those YouTubers um, like TJ Hunt and those guys when they get in the car and they slide the camera through the steering wheel onto the, the area where the speedometer and everything is and it's just so smooth. But uh, it doesn't work on mine, so we're we doing this. So yeah, it's my birthday today, uh, leveled up to 32. Um, and we figured, seeing as I'm you know, getting a little bit more on in years now, uh, we'd go do something a little bit more uh, my new speed. So we're going to go to Kirstenbosch Botanical Gardens in Cape Town and we're going to look at pretty flowers and the pretty pony and we're going to do just great no things. <laughs> There's no ponies? Where can we go see ponies? Uh, it's no, two, no, no, two. <laughs> no pretty ponies. Okay, but here we go. We'll see you guys at Kirstenbosch. Okay, Rad. So we made it to Kirstenbosch. Um, Obviously, being Cape Town, South Africa, COVID at the moment, we have to wear masks. But um, here's the beautiful Table Mountain and my dirty car. Imagine walking into one of these plants in the wilderness, dude. You'd freaking die. Right, I do not think that this is drinking water, my guy. Hello? So I'm gonna take a risk and just lower my mask a bit, but we're in the botanical garden is called Kirstenbosch in Hairthorn. And in a place like this, obviously you're going to be photographing a lot of plants. So I figured today, instead of just doing a Stoll's test on the Canon M200, I would do an unfair comparison between the Nikon D810 with the Sigma 105 macro and the Canon with the standard kit lens of 15 to 45. Let's go. Okay, so this would be my final wrap up of my personal hands-on experience with the Canon M200. Um, so I took it out yesterday to Kirstenbosch um, just to go do some random stall shots, take a little bit of video and do a bit more of the vlog uh, as you've seen. And uh, I figured I should probably wrap this up with a little bit more about my opinions or a little bit more of my opinions of the Canon M200. Um, I originally wanted to do this whole, or I mean, as you've seen, I wanted to do this whole unfair comparison between uh, the Canon M200 and my Nikon D810. Um, but I want to sway away from that. I actually want to focus a bit more on why I personally think that the Canon M200 is 
the perfect entry-level vlogger camera um, so obviously it's cheap um, here in South Africa you're looking at around 8,000 Rand to 12,000 Rand uh, for one of the kits so obviously if you're getting it with the the standard 15 to 45 mil lens um, you're looking at around eight eight and a half nine thousand rand um, if you want to get it with the kit lens which I think is the 55 to 200 mil lens um, you're looking at closer to about twelve thousand rand um, personally for me I went for just the standard 15 45 kit because I already have all the other gear that I need for stalls um, I didn't think I would maybe use this camera for anything long range uh, that might come back to haunt me um, as I am currently thinking about getting another EFM lens already um, but more about why I think it's such a good vlogging camera um, and it's something I mentioned I don't know if I put it in the video or not but it's something that I mentioned before and that's that this camera has made me want to get up and go do things it's made me want to go places that I've been before but for work you know this time it's actually made me want to go and shoot um, for example Kirstenbosch I've never had the desire to go and photograph flowers no offense to the flower lovers out there it's just never been my thing but for some reason I woke up on Thursday and I was like man I really want to go to Kirstenbosch um, on Saturday go shoot have a fun time with my wife um, you know celebrate my birthday but go and shoot the weekend before that I had the insatiable urge to go out and photograph the sunrise which is something i haven't done for a very long time okay back to specifications so obviously with the canon m200 being entry level you have quite a few limitations um i'm going to read the stats off so you have an apc uh, apsc format sensor which is essentially a 1.6 crop factor or 1.5 crop factor correct me if i'm wrong in the chat um, which long story short just means it's a slightly less uh, size on the sensor and you have a little bit less of an image so with for example a 15 mm to 45 mm lens it equates to something like 26 mm to 57 or 60 something mm don't quote me because I'm not going real stats but you get the point basically you don't get a full 15 millimeter you get close to 30 mm um, it's really small, really compact, really easy to use. Um, I've said that before, but it is something I need to point out. Um, it's something that came to the fore yesterday at Kirstenbosch. So I decided to obviously take some shots of my D810 and I handed the Canon over to my wife. Um, and she's a complete novice when it comes to shooting um, stalls or anything. She doesn't do it. She takes the phone and takes shots. Um, but you know, she slapped it in, in manual mode for a bit, got confused and then put it over to, to TV, uh, to shutter priority and had a blast. Um, some of the shots that you would have seen earlier in the video are actually hers. Um, I won't say which, but you can try guess for yourself. Um, but she loved it. I mean, it's more easy for her to carry around, easy for her to use. Um, and when she threw it back into automatic mode, it just became a joy. Uh, she wanted to start shooting and all of a sudden she wants to go shoot again. So it's given me another opportunity to take her out and to go cool places um other than that it's got 4k movie capability um if you're shooting in 4k obviously you're going to have an, an increased crop so you're going to have an additional crop over and above uh the original APS-C crop um personally i haven't shot or i haven't kept any footage from 4k um i didn't think it was worth it uh, i didn't like the additional crop um, and generally if I was going to shoot 4k I'd be doing that so that I could slow it down um, if I wanted to do time lapses and stuff like that as well uh, and slowing down 24 frames a second really it's not the best uh, unless you're using big Premiere Pro software and you know how to trick the system um, ISO range on the camera is really good really surprising um, I didn't really go over about 2000 ISO uh, max out I think about 1600 yesterday for some of the darker things um, but it handles it really well um, and obviously because it's got a smaller sensor and it hasn't got as many uh, megapixels it's only got 24.1 megapixels effective um, you get a lot less noise at high ISOs which is something that not a lot of people seem to know about um, also shutter speed wise um, you can take it up to about 4 thousandths of a second uh, 1 4 thousandths of a second sorry and I did that once or twice yesterday uh, there was a shot with these like purple flowers uh, where I managed to almost completely darken up the background. Um, that was just one four thousandth of a second at like ISO 100. Um, so the camera is really good at 
those drastic ranges obviously it's lacking in more um, sometimes you would want to go a little bit higher than that if you wanted to really freeze a subject as well um, but other than that I think if you're going to be using this for you know a camera that you can put on get out the car go walk around you know go take vlogs of your city or of the attractions around you fantastic you know you can honestly leave it in automatic mode um, and just start shooting easy as that there are a few um, issues with it I guess uh, it's not really issues everyone knows about this stuff uh, but you can't shoot for too long um, I found that if I was running the camera consistently for about half an hour to an hour uh, it gave me an overheating warning um, so I had to put the camera off for a few minutes which bugs me but what do you expect you know it, it is essentially it's not a video camera it's a stores camera if you will um, I also found that when I'm using it with a bigger hot shoe so for my my video tripod um, it seems to get hotter quite a lot quicker, which also irritated me. But I mean, what can you do? Uh, like I said, you don't really buy it to film for an hour at a time, realistically. Um, other things that I really enjoy about it are the flip up screen. So it's got a three inch screen that can obviously flip up completely so you can see yourself, which is weird because I keep looking at it and then I'm supposed to be looking here, but I'm looking there and I'm like, man, I'm not a good vlogger yet. Um, so I really, <laughs> I really love that. The microphone on it is pretty good. Um, I've left the microphone's um, detection in automatic mode, so it does adjust based on your voice. Um, but obviously, you're still going to get quite a lot of ambient sound around, which you can't really do much about that. If you want to avoid that, you're going to want to get something like an H1, a Zoom H1, which is just quite cheap. Um, but yeah, as you've seen in the video, uh, have you seen by the, a lot of the photos? And obviously the video was also taken on this camera, like very easy to use, surprisingly very good to use. Um, the shots, the still shots from the M200, I didn't even load into Photoshop or Lightroom. I honestly just used Windows 10 uh, picture editor and tweaked the, the brightness and a little bit of clarity um, and a little bit of color adjustment. Uh, didn't do much, but once again, for an entry-level photographer or videographer who probably won't have you know photoshop or those kind of apps you can literally load it into windows 10 uh, edit the picture in windows picture viewer and get really great results out of it which is fantastic so i think to wrap up my whole canon m200 debate or discussion or hands-on impression i think all around it's a nine out of ten for me um very good entry-level vlogging camera 100% would recommend um, also very good entry level stalls camera if you want to learn how to take shots or get your significant other into taking shots very good very much a camera that can take you into intermediate stages um, but yeah going on with my whole you know affordable vlogging kit if you will um, I think in the next vlog I'm either going to talk about affordable lighting cheap solutions to light yourself in studio for vlogging or i'm going to talk about affordable audio but we'll figure it out so if you guys want to hear about cheap makeshift lights or if you want to hear about a cheaper solution to audio let me know in the comments down below and we'll see if we can throw that into the vlog next week goodbye have a great week further and i'll see you again